But let's talk to the broader point of journalistic integrity. Yes, journalistic integrity would be great. And yes, it kind of sucks that developers are paying journalists and magazines for favorable reviews, or otherwise exchanging favors with them. Unfortunately, this relationship exists in all media. Movies do this. This is why Michael Bay's Transformer movies have four and five star reviews plastered across their commercials, because they pay magazines for those reviews is in fact a false equivalence. I can understand his position, but this is a false equivalence for one crucial factor. Well, movie producers like Michael Bay or M. Night Shyamalan could pay critics at most, the most, the most good it would do is just hype up a movie, get people to watch the movie, Give them money and then that's it. They're not going to start a rebellion to um, get their monies back because they paid for a movie that mm, he should have known the movie could have been bad. And we have the internet today. So if you don't want to spend money on a terrible movie, then I suggest that you let the critics watch the movies first and then you go, you go to the movie yourself and decide on whether or not it is good. Why do you think we have sites like Rotten Tomatoes and um, Metacritic and all those other um, movies, movie critics out there? Now, gaming journalists, on the other hand, they're fucking corrupt as hell. Because they're willing to side with Anita Sarkeesian. They're willing to write mass, lots and lots of articles. I mean, this has been proven that, that we have a bunch of gaming journalists working together to support Zoe Quinn. And that's just not right. Especially in fucking Kotaku. And they're not willing to listen to the other side, that they're, they're, they're just, you know, siding with Zoe Quinn because she has a vagina, or they're siding with Zoe Quinn or the likes of Anita Sarkeesian because, you know, feminism means equality, and, and let's face it, you're not willing to listen to criticism from gamergators because you believe that feminism means equality, therefore opposing feminism is like opposing perfection. I mean, you are obviously so full of yourself that you're willing to not debate gamer gators. You're, you're just going to label them all as haters. Uh, hate, hateful people who just want women out of gaming when, hmm, let's see, about two-thirds of America are freaking gamers and <laughs> about 45% of women, I mean, 45% of gamers are women and lots and lots of women are in Gamergate. So, Sorry, pal, you pretty much lost at this one. It's not that it's fine or okay, it's just that it exists everywhere and no other fandom feels the need to go on long diatribe rants and send private messages to people and dox people. It's just, this is not a sane reaction. If somebody commits an offense and you call them out on it, that's fine. But when your response to their offense becomes more troublesome than their offense, then don't be surprised when the attention and the targeting turns back on you. That we actually done that before. Uh, we have uh, been trying to find um, the one who's been harassing Anita Sarkeesian, you know, um, harassing Anita Sarkeesian, the one who's been, you know, making these bomb threats against Anita Sarkeesian. We even found uh, the guy who's been impersonating Anita Sarkeesian. And it was some guy from, I believe, India, I think. And guess what? Anita Sarkeesian has yet to acknowledge that. Instead, what has she done? 
Oh, 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 I can't hear you. Gamergate is evil. Gamergate is evil, and you're no different. You haven't even bothered to talk to the likes of, say, Monday Matt or uh, Internet Aristocrat or whatever. You don't bother to talk to Gamergate or people who support Gamergate. You just want to stick your head in the sand and pretend that you are right while everybody around you who disagrees with you is wrong automatically because what you believe is equality and nothing in the world can change that. You, sir, are a deuce. And when even Boogie2988, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I love Boogie, he's a great guy, but when even he is operating under Warner Brothers, like, totally draconian brand deal where he's not allowed to say anything bad about Shadow of Mordor, then the whole idea of him campaigning for journalistic integrity and looking out for the consumer is undermined just a little bit. As for anybody who says that applying the term misogyny to all gamers is a mistake, you are correct. Not all gamers are misogynists. But, and I've tried to stress this point again and again, the gaming culture has a problem with misogyny. It's not that video games has a problem with misogyny, it's that you have a problem with video games. That we, that, that video games, need to fit your perspective on how, what makes a perfect video game. That we must, or these game developers, must change their ways, their evil, filthy ways, in order to fit your agendas. Even though you're a part of a massive minority, and plus what you define as sexism or misogyny is not seen by many, many gamers. It's not uh, misogynistic to sh kill a woman, okay? It's not misogynistic to have strippers in a fucking strip club, trying to please a man. What you, as a social justice warrior, have a problem with video games is that video games are making our penises grow very, very hard. Well, I got some news for you. They don't, okay? I don't jerk off to video games. If I wanted to jerk off to something, there's a thing called PORN! So does all culture, yes, but we're talking about gaming culture because that is the framework in which all of this berserk craziness has happened. Because study after study has been done, and yes, female gamers who get online and interact with other players are, depending on which study you read or listen to or whatever, are about 30 times more likely to be harassed or sexually called out or whatever than male gamers. That is what we're trying to address here. I am an avid gamer, but when somebody says that the gaming culture has a problem with misogyny, I'm like, dude, okay, let's see what we can do about that. Not, I'm not a misogynist. Because that's not helpful. And disguising your outrage and your indignancy, indignancy, is that a word? You can tell I'm a writer. If you want to go after journalistic integrity, talk about Warner Brothers brand deal, which like, Nobody seems to be talking about in Gamergate. But, and I'm sorry to be the one to have to tell you this, it's too late to- uh, Maybe because they're not invading people's cultures. They're not trying to ruin the movie culture somehow. Because they're not telling people on what they believe, or, I mean, not what they believe. What they've grown up with is absolutely wrong all of a sudden. That, what- they enjoy is sexist or misogynist or racist or it shows prejudice towards the children with 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 with, with um, I don't know diabetes. Game people who oppose Gamergate and social justice warriors, they're invading our gaming culture. They are telling us what we believe in. What we enjoy is sexist. What we enjoy is racist. What we enjoy pretty much hurt their tiny little feelings. You do not know the gaming culture. You spit on the gaming culture even though you so even though you have no idea on how the gaming culture works. You don't even bother to talk to people who are from Gamergate or a gamer like myself, you haven't responded to my videos, so that explains, you know, I, 
I know that you're not going to respond. And even if you did, your video response would probably very, be very, very, very poor. It's people like Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn, and everyone from Kotaku is telling gamers and having no idea on how gaming works or how us gamers feel. They're telling us what we like is sexist. Well, guess what? Fuck you. To shift the Gamergate talk to that, because Gamergate is associated with too much crap already. Once again, that link in the description tells you how it started, and now that name is tainted by that forever. So we should focus on the past rather than the present. Works for the feminists. But yes, the idea of Gamergate as a movement for journalistic integrity is dead or never existed. And any movement for journalistic integrity in games media will be very hard to get off the ground because, frankly, it doesn't exist anywhere else. You really want to make a move for journalistic integrity, support online gamers who do not sign any brand deals, who just play, who just review games. And unfortunately, that probably doesn't include anybody that you currently watch. Not The Escapist, as much as I love them. Not Boogie, as much as I love him. You want to start a movement of honest game reviews? You you start playing games, you give your honest opinion on them, and you upload with a new hashtag. I got it, let's call it Honest Gamers. I have my online game series, Garrett's Games, I'll start using the Honest Gamers hashtag. If you want to join in, go ahead. But the idea that anybody who's out there who's doing it for a living and who's getting paid to do it isn't being hounded by developers and game companies is just naive. So get off the Gamergate hashtag because that is the last name that should be associated associated with the term journalistic integrity. Thanks for watching Rebels. Tomorrow I'm going to talk to you about the brand deal that Warner Brothers put out for Shadow of Mordor and why that matters to this topic in general and why more people should be talking about. But until then, hope to see you tomorrow. Bye. Atheist Gamer, peace the game out.